microbiology, the study of the smallest living things. Cells, bacteria, and viruses. Some of these cause infectious diseases, diseases which spread naturally. Biological warfare, BW, is simply the artificial spreading of an infective agent. Stage one, grow the agent. Stage two, spread it. Compared with rocket missiles carrying high explosive, BW could be very cheap. Highly sophisticated weapons are not necessary. Large fermentation vessels exist. They could be used to grow materials for BW. In fact, many disease agents are grown for the preparation of vaccines. The skill and knowledge required is distributed round the world, and it must be so. All people should benefit from immunization against the ravages of natural diseases. For BW stage two, dispersal from aircraft, such as this agricultural crop sprayer, is feasible by any country against another. There are many planes and sprayers. Other worldwide knowledge is available and could be used to make a BW attack more devastating. Meteorology for wind direction and air currents. The behavior of disease causing microbes in the atmosphere studied in order to understand and try to prevent the natural spread of infection. How does our own country stand as a possible BW victim? Here are some universally known facts. It has a relatively dense population fairly predictable winds and is surrounded by water. A ship can carry a large quantity of material which could be sprayed into the air. This material could be carried by the wind and spread right across the country. Should we tell potential enemies all we know about our own vulnerability? Although BW appears easy, defense is difficult. How can an attack be detected quickly? You can't smell it. You can't see it. You can't taste it. You can't feel it. And you can't hear it. Our atmosphere is heavily polluted with all kinds of small particles. So the detection of a disease-causing particle is a complex problem. If costly research produces a detection method, should we make our knowledge public and hence easier for an aggressor to avoid? All government defense research produces information which is of value to a potential enemy, information he continually seeks. Much of the success of radar during World War II was due to the enemy's ignorance. Scientists working on this secret defense were accused of developing a death ray by some of their fellow countrymen, who must ironically have benefited from the detection of enemy aircraft by radar. For some types of defense against a BW attack, which would most likely occur at night, rapid detection and warning are essential. Immunization against infectious diseases is obviously not secret. It must be carried out long beforehand by the public health authorities. Medical treatment can save lives and alleviate suffering, but this is after people have already been affected. MRE is concerned with all these aspects of defense. Because BW is simply a modification of something nature has already inflicted on the world, most of MRE's work is of benefit to man in many fields. Medicine, for example, preventing the spread of infection in clinics where severe burns are treated in agriculture for disease prevention in farm animals. Air pollution, the techniques of air sampling. Industry, for production of materials by fermentation methods. 
and in fundamental scientific knowledge. An international symposium on continuous culture held at MRE brought together scientists from America, Russia, Sweden, Holland and Czechoslovakia. Scientists at MRE are among the pioneers in this work and the Porton fermenter is a byword. The continuous process is potentially many times more efficient than the simpler batch culture methods. It has economic importance for industrial fermentations such as production of antibiotics, foodstuffs or even beer. But perhaps even more important is the ability to adjust the culture conditions and to keep the conditions constant. This affects the bacteria or yeast cells growing in the culture, so they have particular properties and contain particular substances. If the correct conditions can be used, the bacteria will contain more of the substances needed for vaccines and better immunization against infectious diseases will be possible. This kind of work needs special apparatus which has to be made by experts with many different skills. Although television and newspaper cameramen have spent many hours in MRE, they almost always only represent the work carried out here by this. But these men do in fact have faces. What do they really do? They grow various bacteria, fungi, protozoa and viruses, often for universities or medical trials or public health use. MRE has the necessary skills and equipment. Over half a million doses of Asian flu vaccine were rapidly produced at the time of the 1957 epidemic. Research at MRE on the disease anthrax led to a method for producing an excellent vaccine. It is manufactured here from avirulent anthrax bacteria, which are not especially dangerous to the workers. They wear masks and hoods, so that they do not contaminate the vaccine material, in the same way a surgeon's mask safeguards his patient. The anthrax vaccine is carefully tested, and then sent to the Lister Institute in London, who distribute it. Industrial firms, both in this country and abroad, use it to protect their workers who handle materials such as hides, which might have come from diseased animals. Some existing bacterial vaccines are not entirely satisfactory. Plague vaccine, for example. Genetic studies on the virulence factors of the plague organism indicate the possibility of producing a better vaccine. All MRE staff are immunized to protect them against laboratory infections. The Porton needleless injector was developed at MRE for mass immunization. It can administer about 700 doses per hour and causes almost no discomfort in comparison with the conventional needle. Because the research here requires pathogenic or disease-causing organisms, special safety equipment is designed and made. Air is continuously drawn into this cabinet and passes out through a special filter which prevents any bacteria from escaping. All the research laboratories are air-conditioned and air from these rooms is filtered before leaving the building. When the special filters have been assembled, they are tested before use to ensure they cannot allow bacteria to pass through. Waste water from the laboratories is sterilized in large tanks and tested for any contamination before it is allowed to pass outside. Because MRE has these special safety features, almost any dangerous disease can be studied. Recently, the German authorities asked for help with a new and highly infectious disease which had rapidly killed seven people. Tissues from monkeys is used to prepare some human vaccines and the disease was present in green monkeys imported from East Africa. The causative agent can now be grown in guinea pigs or in tissue culture and possible curative substances are being tested.
MRE's special resources are also to be used to study the spread of foot and mouth disease virus in order to help prevent a recurrence of serious epidemics. In general, there is no treatment for a disease caused by a virus. So vaccines for immunization against these diseases are especially important. Many new vaccines are needed. The virus needed to prepare a vaccine will only grow in living cells. The use of animals for this purpose can be avoided by substituting animal cells growing in bottles. This is tissue culture. In a complicated nutrient medium, the cells stick and grow on the inside surface of the glass. When the tissue culture is infected with a virus, it grows inside the cells, which usually degenerate and die, leaving clear areas of glass. The amount of virus in the culture is often measured by using tissue cells again. But now the virus is prevented from spreading to all the cells by agar gel. The patches or plaques of cells destroyed by the virus can then be counted. Improved vaccines can be prepared if the virus is concentrated and purified. In order to develop a new vaccine, it must be tested to see if it produces immunity to a disease and to see if it has any adverse effects. This can only be done in animals, kept in premises officially registered with the Home Office. The number of animals used here is very small in comparison with the total used in Britain. The animals are well cared for and the high standard of MRE's animal accommodation was praised by the Littlewood Committee. At lunch times, the staff enjoy various activities arranged by the sports and social club. The apparatus used in the laboratories is decontaminated by autoclaving before it can be safely washed clean and then prepared for use again. Many people, mainly from British and foreign scientific institutes, visit MRE each year to see experiments and to meet members of the staff. Parties from schools and universities are shown round the laboratories. This visitor is interested in asparaginase, an enzyme which might have some value in the treatment of leukemia. This research is carried out for the Ministry of Health. A large number of bacteria are being tested to find which produces the most enzyme. Rapid measurement of the enzyme samples is made with an automatic analyzer. In a separate building, at the experimental plant, experiments with large-scale cultures are being made in order to obtain useful quantities of the asparaginase enzyme. A wide range of microorganisms has been grown with this equipment, partly financed by the Medical Research Council. In return, MRE has supplied many materials for medical research and substances for fundamental work in molecular biology to university laboratories throughout the country. Special bacteria have been supplied for studies on pollution in rivers. 
In many cases, the culture is partly processed for outside users who have no equipment large enough to do this. Further education is encouraged at all levels. Graduate staff can submit theses on their research work to obtain higher university degrees. Students can work at MRE during university vacations and gain experience of research methods. Chances of doing research a higher degree as a result of working at a government establishment, but this depends very much more on the university regulations rather than on the regulations of the Ministry of Defence. Much of the work that we do is suitable for a thesis. Um, if you did, in fact, stay at the university, would you necessarily stay at uh, University College London? I like my department very much, and of course it's a very good department, so in many ways I'd like to stay there. But on the other hand, it might be good for me to get some experience elsewhere. I, I don't know yet. Roy and Terry are juvenile experimental workers who are taking advantage of MRE's special training scheme. They come to MRE at school leaving age, and are given five years training in various laboratories. One weekday is spent at the local college preparing for examinations in various technologies or for GCE subjects. Philip is a sandwich student from Salford University who is working at MRE for four and a half months to provide some practical training as an integral part of his studies. John is a senior research fellow, a temporary member of the staff who wants freedom to move around to different research institutes. His work here is concerned with a new method of purifying viruses. The scientific staff report the progress of their work to the director at informal meetings. And we've been studying the infection rate in sheep over the, the last few years. And uh, in 1960, we had the highest infection rate in the sheep, with the half the lambs dying in that year. And the infection rate has been falling pretty steadily since then, and it reached its lowest in 1965. But since then, we've been the, the infection rate has been increasing steadily. And already this year, we've had six deaths in lambs in the area. Abby, you, you've been uh, <coughs> looking for virus and ticks uh, in mice and Hillary and in, in tissue culture. So what have you found this year? We examined about 400 ticks. There were no virus isolation in mice. Were there any tissue culture? No, they were all negative. I think the really important thing about all this is that because the lambs are protected by antibody they get from the mallows, and because the infection rate in the mallows has been steadily falling all over this period, we've been accumulating more and more lambs which will die if they get infected, and it looks as if we're set up for... Although MRE is concerned with only one branch of science, microbiology, a wide range of topics is worked on from epidemiology to studies on the genetic control of penicillin production. New strains of a fungus, Aspergillus nidulans, are made by genetic crosses and tested. This new strain of the fungus has killed a larger zone of bacteria indicating better penicillin production than either parent strain. How many of these have we inoperated this week? 150. 150. And down here's a point Hello? Most of the research work which has produced a worthwhile contribution to new knowledge is written up as scientific papers. These are sometimes read at meetings of scientific societies or more often sent to one of the scientific journals. Last year, approximately one paper was published for each graduate scientist at MRE. This is comparable to other scientific establishments. The published journals form the main communication between scientists throughout the world. And a translation service is available for foreign languages. 
MRE's library takes in about 150 different journals. These same journals are to be found in thousands of other libraries. In this way, MRE's work is known all over the world. However, in the interests of national security, for you and for me, it is necessary to keep a small amount of MRE's defence work secret. No work is undertaken on the development of munitions for the spreading of diseases. The research is limited to that necessary to enable an effective means of defence to be devised.